Let's just first talk about, uh, we've got um, Mike Pompeo is in Saudi Arabia now. And um, despite the fact that I suggested that he was going with an empty duffel bag looking for more cash so that um, uh, for, I don't know, for some investment that Donald Trump has, maybe for him to go bury in the the back of his uh, golf course in Queens or wherever it is, um, that it definitely looks like, or I should say, it looks like Donald Trump realizes because you remember, he cares about nothing, which is, in this instance, going to work to probably the world's favor. Um, he is not interested in, in, in getting into a war in Iran. Uh, apparently, the Saudis um, ran out of money uh, when it came to Donald Trump. And uh, But who knows? Maybe he's looking for, for a better offer by sending Pompeo there. However, there was um, Admiral Brett Stevens... Uh, went on to uh, uh, MSNBC yesterday. Uh, Brett Stevens, you'll recall, was the one who uh, pretended being called a bed bug um, was akin to what um, what the Nazis did to uh, the Jews. Uh, because despite the fact that he is probably, I don't know, the top one of the top 50 probably paid columnists in the country i mean certain probably top 20 <sighs> that I makes mean, me so mad um he doesn't bother to look at the sources that he cites in his articles and builds an entire um opinion piece around the idea that um a professor calling him a bed bug uh somehow was akin to fascists attacking um, the Jews in the uh, Warsaw ghetto. Oh, and incidentally, he also called that professor's uh, boss to complain about a tweet. He sent an email to the boss, which he CC'd the professor right, on right. to. Yeah. He also just want to say he did liken, and granted, this is when he was at the Wall Street Journal, so anything does literally go there. He likened the Palestinians to mosquitoes. Right. I love the fact that with these people, it can't just be that actually he's ridiculous and oversensitive. It's actually like, oh, put a, there's actually a direct analogy here. Put a pin in that because um, part of Billy Bragg's, um, uh, you know, it's, it's a small book. It's like a pamphlet, essentially. It uh, talks about that dynamic, actually, by the IDW. Um, freedom of expression for, for me, not so much for thee. But uh, here is Brett Stevens. Basically, um, desperately trying to revive any type or enhance any war tensions. Basically arguing that, you know, there's we can definitely strike them in a fashion that will just be fine. I mean, I'm not even sure what the point of this is supposed to be, but go ahead. Pressure. And by the way, we should not rule out targeted military responses against Iran if they are proportionate and if it's clear that it's in, it's an effort to change uh, to change Iranian uh, um, Iranian behavior. It's happened before in the past. In 1987, we sank the Iranian Navy without any consequences for the for the United States. We we could do it again. We can signal to the Iranians that we do. Pause it. I want you to just contemplate <clears throat> for one moment. 1984. What's the difference between now and 1984? In 1984, we did not have thousands of troops in the Shia-controlled parts of Iraq. So, and, and this is amazing because Admiral um, uh, Stevens here would know this because of all his war college training that he probably had, is that Close proximity of your uh, military assets will enhance the opportunity for your opponent to strike you. And so the idea that this is analogous, oh, we did it in, in, in the 80s because, and, and we got away with it, there was no response well, there's going to be other responses. We have troops well, in Shia-dominated Iraq. We also did pull, Reagan pulled all troops out of Lebanon in 83, which he should have. Uh, but tragically, I mean, Hezbollah blew up an army right. barracks there. So, so actually, even in this timeline, we're being a little generous. Though right. Bedbug's known for being very hawkish. Right. But, uh, all right so, but here we go back. So even though that we don't have evidence, we shouldn't take off the table. We shouldn't. 
take off the table like a military. Yeah, we can just take out the Navy. It'll be whatever. It won't. Yeah, let's not worry about escalation. And, and exactly like exactly what is supposed to change here? What, 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 what is the dynamic that's supposed to change with like if we just show them that we're willing to take out their Navy, then what? But going to change uh, to change Iranian uh, um, Iranian behavior. It's happened before in the past. In 1987, we sank the Iranian Navy without any consequences for the for the United States. We we could do it again. We can signal to the Iranians that we do mean business, but we are we, we we're trying to do so in a, in a proportionate way that ultimately leads to a new and better negotiated outcome. Okay. The idea being here that if we sink their navy, then we're going to get a better deal from them or something. Or they uh, recognize guess what? We, we better- had a deal. Dumb, dumb. Oh, and you know what? I got my boss's number too for you that we can put up on the. Uh, Wait, I can send him my boss's number. It's mine. It's my number. Good. How can he say that in such a calm voice? It's crazy. You have to. That's actually, that's literally that's exactly you what it. you have to do. You have to say it in a calm because I'm not crazy. I'm just suggesting that we perhaps dilly-dally around the edges of a massive, massive, extended another war. I mean, we're wrapping up our, our existing ones. Yeah, we've got things we got to get something else. By the way, the consequences, Iran recognizes that they better build a weapons capacity with their nuclear program. Right. That's the only thing that will assure their security. I also really like Sam pulling out the, you want to speak to the manager? Right, exactly. I am the manager. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, I swear I could see you doing a stint at Kinko's years ago just so you could say that to an unhappy customer. Um, I actually, like, a, like, even I like worked in at the a middle Chinese of your restaurant. acting career. I worked at a Chinese restaurant where I was the day manager uh, only because I was the only person who spoke English and no one <laughs> would. times did you pull country? that line out? Every time. <laughs> I'm going to go back and check with the day manager. Oh, the day manager uh, said you can get an extra chicken wing today. Did you ever do a turnaround? But did you ever like like turn to walk and then just immediately turn like let me go get the manager? When oh when wait. when I got the letter from those patent trolls, I was going to do a whole thing. They wanted to do a, a video conference call um, with with me about it because I guess they wanted to like see me eye to eye when they talked about the patent troll. And I do you remember this? I was talking about that how like really I wanted funny. to do like a whole thing where it's like. Oh yeah, hold on one second. I'm gonna go check with uh, with uh, our accountant, uh, our financial uh, division, to see about well, you know how much we can afford to pay you. And I was just gonna duck under the desk and put on one of those accountant hats. <laughs> 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 um, 